Hey crew, uh, Mark Hadmaker here. Let's uh, talk of some old school boxing, old school rough and tumble combatives, old school uh, boxing and defense, a little bit of street dentistry. We'll get some definition there in just a moment. Uh, we want our street work to be painful, obviously, when we're throwing something offensive, but we also want it to be painful on the defensive side of things. So to, uh, to work to get there, we're going to run through uh, how uh, a sport deals with incoming straight shots, jabs and rear straights. Uh, and then uh, we'll start moving through some adjustments, some of the early boxers, uh, starting around the, the 20s, like the Roaring 20s. And then move it through uh, what Street Dennis did. We'll define that a little later on. And then uh, we'll add a little bit of fist loading in there as well to make sure your defense is rock solid and kind of uh, screwing up a fist, maybe from the first go. Hey, Kylie, can I bring in here, please? There's uh, some gloves back that you can slip them on. First and foremost, we know we're discussing, we got a jab coming in or a rear straight coming in. Uh, so we're just going to work this off of a jab, make everything easy. And all of our demonstration purposes here, we kind of done profile. Sometimes I'll turn to you guys right here, facing on. Uh, and uh, we won't be moving around, keeping it live. We'll just kind of keep it somewhat static and stock still so we can see what is occurring. Uh, the standard catch, whenever a punch is coming in, we don't want to cuff at it, we're opening up the line, we want to raise against a punch, we want to slap down at it, we want to stay in nice good position, which means good box position, which means forearms parallel, not kind of V'd out, opening up the bread, box, a bread basket there, anything like that, hands up, you know, we can have, you can even make a, a loose fist if you want, or kind of turn the palms out a little bit. It doesn't really matter as long as we got this kind of like boxed position. We see a box right through here, we're describing a box. Um, when the punch is coming in, what we want to do is, again, not get around to the outside. So we should just freeze it here at the end. I don't want to be on the outside of it, above it. I don't want to be lifting up. Why do I not want this? If I'm facing directly onto you as this punch is coming in, I do this. I opened up my face. I do this. Open up my face. I'm down here. It means my hand was too low to begin with. We want to stay good defensive position, so we're here. I'm going to allow this punch to receive into the bottom heel of my hand. Right here. You see that? So as the punch comes in, give me a nice jab. Here. I go out to it, that means I still have this line covered up. So I want to be defensive while I'm defending, right? Right. Okay, it's not rocket science at this point. So she throws those punches. Here, here, here. A little bit of a, a catch. That's all we're doing with it. Now, when, while you're doing the catch, you do want to make sure that you are receiving and not meeting. Meaning this, so let's have a freeze it right here, halfway. I don't see this jab come in and get so far in front of it, I'm all the way out here. We see this is too far, too extended. Why? Well, because we know if she was faking that or quick off the shot, if she turns this into a loose open uh, hooking off the jab, I've opened up too much of a line. So I wanna make sure that I'm kind of uh, meeting only a third out. The other thing I don't want to do is leave my hand way back here and just be catching it this far back or catching loose because what happens, throw a jab please, <laughs> we can't really tell that, that blows back into my face. I don't want it to be close to me, I want to give a little bit of pop into it, okay? I don't have to push it back, so in other means when she throws, I'm not trying to shove it all the way back into the face. I just a little bit of a meat and let this move off because I want to use, you know, get into some counter revolution. This kind of acts as my punch to fire off my next trigger shot out of it. Now. Nothing wrong with any of that. That's the sportive catch of it. Boxes, are, we're going to start pinpointing this around the roaring 20s of the last century. Start doing a really clever innovation with it. And uh, this is the one I would advocate if you're sportive, you, you would really want to steal and use for the rest of your life. And if you're street combatives, you're going to steal the mechanics of it. And then we'll kind of alter it a bit when we get to uh, make it even rougher and meaner. The difference is going to be a slight angle in how we're catching. Meaning, when she throws this in, she throws that jab, <clears throat> throw it again. Did we see any difference? All right. I did the uh, standard catch on the first one, and I did the uh, Roaring Twenties catch on the second one. Here's the difference. It's, it's not going to read right then. I'll tell you what the difference. Here's the secret. As this punch is coming in, standard catch, I went out to it. You're throwing that jab. There I am. Mark's going to it. Out to it. Now with the Roaring Twenties catch, slide up. I'm exaggerating a little bit. I'm letting it hit in that palm of the hand, but there's going to be a slide up position. In profile, instead of just going to here, slide up. She's here. There's the jab. I'm going to leave this hand out, throw. Slide up. Again, slide up. Why would we do that? It's brilliant what these early fighters were doing. We know whenever she throws this jab, she's still, if she's got good coverage, good shoulder turnover, her chin's down, she's pretty good in coverage with the jaw. Everything's looking good, nice in here. If anything, she's just opened up uh, this lead side of the body for us. All the more so, though, whenever we give this slide, she throws it and freeze. I've, give, I've opened up that body even more, right? So that's going to make my countering to the body even better. 
Big deal to the street combatants because you're not wanting to waste your hands and bust your hands up on someone's skull. You want to eat up the soft tissue that's all down uh, from the throat down, right? Okay. The other thing this does for us is it uh, upsets their base. It's a small upset, but it means something. What I mean by upsetting base is, you think about it, you're throwing things on the bag, you're hitting the pads, or you're throwing your standard stuff at the work. You're used to putting your arms where you want them to be. When all of a sudden your arm is getting blown uh, to a position you didn't expect, a lightness occurs on the arm that was blown. Meaning, if I throw a jab and you did the rowing 20s catch and I go up to here, I get light on that lead leg. So which means if I were a shooter, meaning I'm gonna go in for a street takedown, or I'm using some sort of lumberjack kick, not necessarily a low leg tie kick, this leg gets light. So super slow comes out, <clears throat> this leg gets light, I'm gonna start eating that thing up. Any kind of kick or shot from knee down, gonna eat this up. The other thing it does is we know it opens up the line for the torso. The other thing is it eats up their set, meaning I wanna throw my jab to rear straight. So here to here. I'm used to how that feels, but all of a sudden I throw this and I'm ready to throw this up, but you've roaring 20 catch me. It changes, it alters my base enough that I'm gonna have, we know this is all happening in just a, you know, like a, a fraction of a second, but I've got to readjust to set in. So by readjusting their set, we know that uh, even whenever you're just behaving defensively, you're being offensive about how you're going to react into it. So roaring 20s catch opens up a line, alters the set, lightens the front, the lead leg, so we're gonna have lots of things to play with off of that. Now, let's talk how the street dentist would do a knuckle buster, all right? Knuckle buster is exactly what it sounds like. All right, she's wearing gloves. If we were doing this full bore, he would actually wrap the hands or tape the hands as well, probably go to 16 ounce gloves. Because uh, if it's street, it's all even better because the lighter the glove or bare fist, you do bust those knuckles, hence the name, right? Whenever this punch is coming in, only difference is going to be, well, I'll tell you what, uh, here first. It's going to be the Roaring Twenties mechanic. Here, right? Up, slide up. Difference will be, I take this hand, I close it into a fist, I turn it over, and instead of going to be the heel, uh, uh, the bottom heel of the hand right here, turn it over, it's going to be this hammer fist portion, all right? I don't go out and have to smack it. I'm doing everything exact the same way. So this comes in, so she throws that jab, <clears throat> Here, the jab, here, all right. You can't see it, a little bit of a flinch off of it, but we feel it through the glove, don't we? Yay. Uh, we don't have to hit it. There's a lot of people think, oh, I need to go really slam into this. No, you don't. They're the ones throwing it. As hard as they throw is as hard as they're going to hit. They're basically throwing their fist into a head-on collision, and you've got nothing. You've got your hands in a, a nice compact position that's going to receive the soft meat of the, uh, so you don't blow your own knuckles out. They're the one receiving the, uh, the knuckle busting. If you doubt the efficacy of this, again, put on... Tape the hands, put on the glove, and I guarantee you, just after just one smooth round of having someone working that against you, you feel that in the hands. Now imagine that if you go to a much lighter glove, or even better, no glove at all, and every defense you have for the rest of your life is you knuckle busting when they're throwing. Any straight that comes in, street dentistry has defenses like this that are destroying every, every angle that's coming in. Your job is to make sure that you're always blowing away and, 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 and making this happen for you. Um, the other thing to keep in mind whenever this is occurring is, again, if we're, if we're strictly sport, standard catch is fine, but I would advocate going roaring 20s. If we're talking street, it's going to definitely be knuckle busting the whole way. Now, there's another way to make this even more devastating, and that is to run with a loaded catch. Uh, I don't care whether you, if you can use the ballpoint pen, it can be a roll of quarters or something a little bit more practical like a uh, you know, TRS has that, uh, uh, the tactical torch, the 330 EDC, uh, one right here. And I'm not going to turn it on and you know, blind you with the flashlight. But we know to carry one of these tactically, we're assuming, now if you, it's okay to use a standard one when you're using your flashlight and you'll flick it on. You're going to hold it in your hand like this and, you know, where do I put my keys or anything like that? Or like if you're working under the sink, <laughs> and do all that sort of nonsense and noise. But if we're actually using this for clearing, which means I've got to have access to my firearm, or I'm just not clear whenever I'm just walking out of the car, is there something going on here? I want my lead hand free and good to go, ready whether I'm going to go for weapons access, or I might need it for offense defense, which means I'm going to be holding this with the light side facing out, holding it in a fist. And you're probably way ahead of me at this point. Once I put it in this fist, so I pump on the button with uh, my thumb, and then at the same time I'm doing that, I'm giving a slight push which means we'll see that, how it kind of protrudes a little bit. So my knuckle busting now has an even harder surface to bust against it. I'm not gonna do it, but I just, uh, you already see what I'm talking about here. So 
I got the light on, I'm moving around, all of a sudden this blast out of the corner, here comes this shot, bam, knuckle bust. Go ahead and get out of here, champ. I got the spike on top of it at the same time. That is a huge <laughs> tactical advantage just by having, uh, by dint of having that in there. And again, even through gloves, you feel such a thing, but we're talking the street side of things, the street dentist side of things, and because uh, I haven't mentioned it, I promise to say what that was, street dentist, in the early turn of the last century, whenever there's a lot of people who were working both inside the ring, boxing, and then sometimes they would moonlight for certain sorts and use their fistic wares and their know-how uh, in the street, and they would alter the game to make sure it had a more devastating effect, one that didn't need to stretch out over rounds, something that needed to get done right now. So essentially, you can play with this early stuff we did in this to the sports side of things, but we really interested, aren't we? We're really interested in what we do with the street and all the mean, nasty, evil goodness. So when you train it, train it safely. And if you're in quarantine lockdown, you don't have someone in front of you to hit, obviously you can use shadow boxing, mirror boxing. You can set up a double end bag, get that thing moving and start working on your knuckle busting against that. So you got the eye hand coordination down for it. Uh, you can run it with, uh, uh, you can run it with the fist loads, uh, whatever you want. But the thing is uh, just train it safely, play with it. And it's a thing of beauty because it looks like you're not really doing anything. They're doing all the work and they're hurting themselves. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.